hello, hello, and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. It is the Get Ready With Me episode, and today we are switching things up. We're elevating. We have makeup artist Shirley Heavens. Hi, and welcome. Thank hey you there. so much. I'm so hey excited. <laughs> <laughs> so Shirley's going to be doing my makeup today as we go through a few questions, and we're also just going to be talking all things being an artist and um, an artist of sorts and putting your work out there for critiquing and the voice of reason as always bonga bota hi bonga how are you hey. doing and we're also going to be going through a few of your questions and comments so yeah. maybe we can dive into the first one while you start uh -huh. hi everybody my name is shady heavens i am a makeup artist self self-taught makeup artist i have my own mobile spa and um i work with my hands so that's my thing i'm an artisan basically so yeah i love to uh, make people look beautiful. And you're being very humble. You're not mentioning that you're a musician <laughs> as well. We're going to tag the link below. So she's also got some amazing music and stuff mm. like that. So she's very much an all-round um, artist in the general scope. And we were just chatting and I was like, we need to have this conversation on the conversation capital. Yeah. We're talking about what it is, the anxieties that come with putting your work out there. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if a podcast is art, but, <laughs> but I'm a voiceover artist and I know what it is to step into the studio. And, but before that, let's start with the questions and comments. Bonga, <laughs> please give us a question or a comment. So on the unspoken impact of blesser culture on men and women part two, the one we had with Jackie, um, Mawe Tumbele says the interviewer is judgmental. You cannot say, oh, that's scary, selling yourself for a handbag yes that's not that that's what not what you value but don't judge what another person values sure uh, so i went to that and i had to go back to the video just to remember the context of what we were talking about at the time and and i'm always very like ready to like see where i'm wrong mm. But I, I'm sorry, I, I just can't take, yeah. I can't be sorry, actually. Sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> um, I, and the thing is, I don't apologize for saying, because my statement was that um, you're sacrificing your life for a handbag. Mm. And so, in essence, I'm saying that I feel that you're more valuable. I don't know who you are, commenter, but I feel that your life is more valuable than a handbag, and I stick to that. Mm. And, which, and I understand what you're saying, that we all value things differently, and I don't take that away. Trust me. I, there are things that I value myself that, you know, in themselves are materialistic or yeah. whatever. Like, don't get me wrong, I want money too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but for me to then say within this blesser culture, um, you know, people sacrificing their bodies and what they want for themselves and, and themselves, you know, because we we're talking about the terrible things that some of these men do to women. Yes. For the handbag, you know, or whatever, you know, material. It was, it was, um, it was, a, a, a placeholder mm. for something bigger. Yeah, I said yes. the word handbag, but I meant, you know, there's other things. Cars, or like yes. it's, at the end of the day, it's your body, it's your desires, it's your life, it's your. And I can't take that back. I really like sat and I was like, hmm, maybe I, I'm not seeing the perspective, but I, I, I just think your life is more valuable than a handbag. Yeah. And, yeah. and I totally get you. I think it's beyond just the material stuff. Like you said, it's a handbag in comparison mm. to you and your mm. life, mm. you know? Mm. And people who've escaped or have gotten out of that can attest to the fact that, I mean, Jackie is one yes. of them. She was there. Uh, can attest to the yes. fact that momentarily, maybe that was wonderful to have, mm. but in the bigger scheme of mm. things, I could have done without that, yes. you know? Sure. Mm. Yeah. So, um, on the same episode, um, Debo Khopadi says, interesting topic. I love the honesty and the manner you have exposed the be the blesser culture on point. Listening to this as a man, I am truly inspired, I must say. Mm. And the fact that the topic is even tackled by ladies, it's a wow. Thanks, Jackie. You are beautiful and a true inspiration. Sean, shout out to Jackie. Yeah. You know, because, and I think it's just that Jackie was in it. Mm. So she tells a story from someone who was there, who was in it, who knows what it's like. The rest of us, Rebuaka, you know, and, and yes. maybe it is possible to say, Ursula Bonga, you guys are sitting on a high horse. You know, you don't know. But we, we spoke to somebody who was in it and yeah. says it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth, you know, uh, what they put you through and what they do to you. So, yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting that he points to the fact that it's women speaking about this mm. because I, I don't think a lot of people would expect that. I mean, some people would, some people wouldn't. 
but it's more so all of us want the soft life mm. you know so okay. it's like everyone would encourage the blesser culture or get to cure the bag type of mm. vibe through a man um and i think that's why he points that out mm. it's not all of and us and when men talk about it it's like why are you hating because you broke <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. so we could be benefactors yo other people are gonna judge us and say yes, ah you yes. you would be a benefactor yes. you would be enjoying it you'd be on the other side mm. if you were indeed a blessing mm. right and then um are some people on the episode yeah um are some people innately polygamous with hika um Sophie One Nkuta. of my favorite episodes yet, by yes. the way. Yo, that Sophie Nkuta fire. says, yeah. I concur with Hika in the lie part, but poly- polyamory is not me at all. It bothers me seeing someone who has a person, I guess, and it bothers me when one is not honest. It mm. is such an inconvenience, as Hika said. Be straight about it or just mm. leave me alone as a monogamous type of woman. The sexuality and relationship thing is tricky shame. And that's so true because I feel like what we were speaking about in terms of monogamy and other avenues of pursuing a relationship mm. is the fact that be honest be upfront. Mm. I mean, as as a person, you were telling me about. I think you spoke to this. So the fact that I would, I want a monogamous relationship. So if you're not in it for that, don't string me along. Yeah, you know, don't like, string me along. Just, oh, mm, like just the truth of it. So admitting that you're polyamorous from the beginning. Yeah. How? Then you can meet someone who's polyamorous like you. But I guess it's in everything because there was there was even a book that I read. Yes, Sam Aubrey. I mentioned this last time. Mm. The Sam Aubrey thing yes. that I did. And then you know he says that when you when you when you're dishonest about who you are, like basically you try to put your best foot forward, what happens is that you're constantly engaging in like a relationship with someone that is not you. That person is not falling in love with Ursula. Yes, they're falling in love with this variation that you're yes. giving them. So it's the same thing with this polyamorous thing. Mm. So you're constantly you're deceiving someone into falling in love with something that you are not. Mm. You know, and that's the thing. And there are two disadvantages. Firstly, you're deceiving that other person. But secondly, then when do you ever get a chance to be loved? You know, you don't allow yourself to to be so vulnerable that it's very hard to concentrate with this thing. <laughs> you know when do you get a chance to allow yourself to be loved for who you are if you're not willing to be vulnerable enough to show us who you are because mm. somebody somebody is down for that like he can say this is my dream okay but if men keep lying and not saying hey i want to be in a polygamous relationship when is he ever going to get to live her dream yeah. you get what i'm saying and that's the mm. funny thing it's acceptable when it's hidden to a lot mm. of them However, if I'm upfront about the fact that it's okay for us to have more than one partner, mm-hmm. it's not like, mm, no, mm. you're promiscuous. And yes. this is what Tehufata, Tehufato, Mihue says. It's mm. quite a long comment. So I think that's not a bad thing since you're blending, right? <laughs> or doing concealer. So I'll just read it as long <laughs> as it is. Um, I echo what Hika said about monogamy as we know and practice it now. It's really toxic more so for women as they have to be the polygamous ones in relationships while men get to be with multiple partners a lot of people think the core of polyamory is just promiscuity Mm. and the main reason for wanting multiple partners is being able to sleep with multiple people at the same time there's a misconception that polyamorous people must be sexually perverted especially women because society has kind of accepted that men cheat Mm. so if a woman does it then there's got to be something wrong with her um the stigma is even worse worse in the lgbtqi plus relationships and i think that's what i just spoke to you about the Mm. fact that it's it's great when it's hidden when it's just you as a man you know you're busy with multiple people but your partner is not aware of it until you meet a girl who's openly aware of, who's openly okay with the fact that we can all have um we can have mm. relationships with multiple people you know mm. and 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 the ba- the fact that it's based on i like the comment based on pr- we we think about it as being promiscuous instead of it being an alternative relationship or another relationship yes. type of relationship yes. it's like how did you turn out that way normative Society. yes How, why why did you get there 
Yeah, I, well, I don't think that was the right term to use. I think I just threw it in because it was new. <laughs> what I actually meant was that we have socialized monogamy yes. as a standard, as he had said. Mm. So because monogamy is a standard, everything else must be bad and wrong. Yes. Which is, hey, hey, it's very tricky. It's very tricky because I know in here I'm still monogamous. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not apologetic for it. No, that's perfectly but, fine. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, you know, and I, that's what I want for myself though. Mm. And I'm not going to impose that yes. on what anybody else wants for them. But, but it's myself. nice to have the choice as well. Yes, and to know that there are other options. Yeah. You know, yeah, and just mitigating that whole lying and, and yeah, dishonesty. And, but I think you can never get rid of dishonesty, but jeans, we can try. <laughs> Especially because there's alternatives, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, the next comment is, let me see. Okay, and then Sinetemba Dlamini just says, I love your comment. Can you guys please consider owning a podcast? Okay, so I guess she says, instead of it just being on video. Definitely need to look into that. Yeah, so I'm looking at uh, our producer and director, Giv. Yeah, we are looking into it because you're not the first person. A lot of people have been asking for that. Mm. Yeah, Spotify, YouTube music. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda what's uh, what's the other one? Apple. Yeah, do you realize we started this in Feb? Like I'm still shocked that now right? we're already this. <laughs> and it's you guys. So yeah, we have thought about it. And she's getting emotional, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> so yeah, we are thinking about those things. And you guys, please keep. Like, and every time I meet anybody who's like, oh, conversation camps, I keep asking, what's your favorite episode? Because I want to know what you guys like and what you guys mm. want us to do. So we really are trying. Um, yeah, like I said, the demand is much higher than what we had anticipated. So, yeah, but we're getting there. We <laughs> Basically, are. we're getting there. Yeah. And, and then on being creative and opening yes. yourself up Ooh. to people and having just comments about you or yeah. about your content. Yeah. So, you know, Shirley and I had the conversation off air and, and then I was like, oh, man, we just need to have this conversation on the Conversation Capital because that's some podcast stuff you know <laughs> you know and and sometimes the conversations are so like real and vulnerable at the time that it's mm. difficult to translate mm. but we were both just talking about what it is because Shelly um had a gig i don't know can i say the story sure. so Shelly had a gig and she was just with like big people around her and she was just like oh she you know i felt like so nervous to put my work out there because she needed to like record a song that she had written and mm. and then they need to be like we like it or we don't mm. you know and then i said to her i know what that feels like, you know, mm. because at the end of the day, it's this creative body that, you know, you're putting out. I mean, like I said, it's arguable whether a podcast is a creative body. <laughs> <laughs> but we sit down and we prepare these conversations. Yeah. We think about who are we going to invite? What's the topic we're going to run like? And then you put the episode up and you wonder how people are going to receive it. Before that, it was like, like voiceovers for me. You walk into a studio and you have no idea whether the client's going to like your voice or not. Mm. You know, it is a day job for you, but at the end of the day, they make the last call. A client can say, oh, thanks for coming through. No. And you know what I'm thinking about when you speak about having to do with creativity? I'm like, I'm not saying not every job. We don't throw ourselves into our jobs. Mm. But like, there's something about being an artist or music mm. and the fact that this is you. Yes. Like, this yes. is me. Yes. When I'm doing a voiceover, yes. this is my voice. Yes. When I'm singing, this is mine. So yes. if you're critiquing that, you're critiquing me. Mm. And like, I think it's a, a report at work. Yes. Um, I, I value my work yes. and whatever. Okay. Uh. But that's, it doesn't feel like an extension of me. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh. It doesn't feel like an extension. Mm. Oh, or maybe... It could be a result of how I view work. View is another work mm. is another part of me. It's mm. not another thing. But with you're artists, in so many confines, yes, that you kind of have to stay within the bounds of a report. Looks like a report. It's got yes. an intro, a body. Yes. But when you're create, when you're trying to create something different and something thought provoking, and and then the thoughts that are provoked are not nice. <laughs> it's a terrible experience. Yeah. It's you very know. difficult because your art is like um, a child. And I, I really like to use that that example because um, the the feeling that you res that you get after you've put it out it's just like when you've you've given birth basically mm. 
uh, you always will have like post-traumatic stress. Yes. You're just thinking about, oh my God, is my baby doing okay? Mm. You go online, you keep checking the numbers. Mm. Um, you check who's clicking on there, which countries are clicking on there. Sure. Are people receiving my work? And it's your mm. baby. You mm. love this thing so mm. much. And, and you put so much into it. It's easy to be saturated mm. in the negative comments as well because yes. this is... Yes. Your, if somebody tells you your baby's ugly, aren't you going to fight somebody? <laughs> yeah. You're going to fight somebody. <laughs> You're going to bring um. up a fight. So, um, you know, the arts are very critical. And I feel like people don't res really respect the, the healing that comes with people who are in the arts because those people actually carry so much to bring people together and then when it's time to actually you know give credit where it's due it's literally the last thing that happens so um yeah art is literally i feel like that is the best way to to explain it it's just like having a child and afterwards is the post-traumatic stress and how do i cope how do i build how do i bring this child up and how do i pull this uh, how, do how do people receive my child and also just being and i think this is important to get to a place but only time can give you that way yes. whether they receive my child well or not yes. whether they receive my body of work well or not getting to a place where you're so confident and getting to a place where you can you decide which comments you're gonna because we, yes. we speak about negative comments but mm. there are many positive mm. comments as yes. well and it's crazy because you can get so caught up in one negative comment over 60 positive ones. So there's something about negativity that just will attach. Mm. I'll tell you guys a story. So I have many stories when it comes <laughs> to my voice. But I, I told Shady specifically the story. So when I was 18, I accompanied a friend of mine. A friend of mine's older sister worked at a radio station. I can say Kai FM. And it was a graveyard shift from like 12 to 6. And, and I remember I was in matric, I was studying for exams. She said, ah, please accompany me and my sister. She just doesn't show, she doesn't like to be there alone. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Went, I remember I had my books. I think I was studying for physics or something. It was matric and it was final exams. So sitting there studying and I remember at some point my friend was napping and I was watching her older sister do this job. And I looked at her and I was like, yo, you're so good at this thing. Like, I wish I had that. I remember my words were, I wish I could do what you doing right now like I wish I could speak like that and whether I was saying it from like a deep place of passion or just passively you know sometimes you're just like oh I wish I was pretty like that was you know mm. I don't remember like where my thoughts were at and then she looked at me and she said to me you have a really nice voice and you could definitely do voice work and she didn't say it like Rena omute, nana. yes mm. she said it so matter of factly like what are you talking about <laughs> mm. you're brilliant your thoughts are and you know you could easily do what I'm doing and I remember, I was like, hmm, well, <laughs> yeah. you know, something like a chip, like sat on my shoulder, yeah. like, and you know, the opportunity didn't come till many years later, mm. but I remember just thinking to myself, I went about now with this thing, I've, I've got a nice voice. I'd never heard it before. Mm. I've got a nice voice. I've got a nice voice. And then when I got to varsity, they, the, the slim girls were getting all these promo gigs. You, Bubonga. <laughs> always promoting alcohol. And you guys always had money. Mm. And then I tried these agencies and every time, Dudla, back of the line. How? Chunky girls, back of the line. They won't even give you like to sell debt all in pick and pay. Like, <laughs> they only want skinny girls. And like, I was so desperate to make a bit of money as well. Mm. And then I remembered this thing. And I've got a nice voice. You know, I literally mm. was sitting there, how am mm. I going to make money? And then when it came to like start auditioning and trying out, a close friend of mine said, your voice is so mediocre. Why do you think that you could do this? And so I'm sitting with these two comments. I've never heard anything about my voice so far. I'm now maybe 20, 21. I've heard two comments. One extremely negative, that your voice is mediocre. The other one is extremely positive. I don't know, Jack. I just know that I've had the same one. I don't have an opinion. So these voices are... And you've got a choice then. Who do you listen Who to? Who do you listen to? Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, well, the other one had experience. She was a voiceover artist. Mm -hmm. She was in radio. And this one is my friend who knows nothing. Mm -hmm. I hope they're no longer your friend. Yeah, she definitely is no longer my friend for many <laughs> other reasons. But <laughs> when you're a kid, you don't see that as toxic, first mm -hmm. of all. You just see it as, oh, we've got an honest friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and so many things are masked under honesty. Toxicity is masked under honesty. But anyway. Yeah. And... 
and I really had to like battle these two and and for a long time like these two things these two voices battled they yeah, they fought they for whistle. a spot but luckily my love for needing money <laughs> I was like well I'm gonna try because I need to get some money that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> you know but it's just that it goes back to like which voice are you gonna listen to you're mm. constantly one side you're being berated for this work that you're putting out on the other side and then I went on to definitely you know experience more voices mm. more I like it I don't mm. I like it and the I like started weighing heavier and started mm. becoming a you know it definitely started I way outweighing the I don't but I was telling Shirley this morning I was like but you also have to accept the people that don't and not despise them for mm. not liking mm. your voice mm. or your work you have to understand that taste is a preference and I'm only getting there now, now. at my big age when this is I'll probably be 30 by then <laughs> at my big age of 30 I'm only getting there now where I'm realizing that a body of work is just that and people are subject to their opinion in the same way when I look at the new Valentino range or whatever mm. and I'm like mm. I, I think like it that much. All of this is so much work from you because like you said you've come to it you're now mm. almost 30 and that's only now you've come to the realization of it. Mm. But a lot of us need to remove ourselves from people's opinions. Mm. You decide. You can decide for yourself. If you love voice over work mm. and you enjoy it and it's something you want to pursue, no matter who says what, mm. unless you genuinely can't objectively sing or mm. something. <laughs> you know, sometimes we must put aside... <laughs> yeah, put aside taste and yes. preference. Aye-yo. Aye-yo. <laughs> But then you're, you're getting gigs and so forth. Clearly, there's mm. something there, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. Which is a difficult ongoing because it also goes back to the imposter syndrome. Mm. Because you always keep questioning yourself. Okay, mm. am I, should I be doing this? Am I meant to be here? Am I meant to be doing this? Sure. Am I good enough for this? Ooh. You know? We've actually got another show that's lined up. We're kind of recording it today, so I don't know when you guys are going to get it. But just looking at imposter syndrome. I can even say the guest. It's going to be Matunzi McDonald. She's coming up. Matunzi, I, I told people, so you have to come. You have to come. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we spoke about it this morning and, and the multifacetedness. So like being a multifaceted individual. Mm. And because of that, that in itself can make you feel like you're lying in mm. some other mm. field. Mm. So I just went on a rant about how voiceover artists, whatever, but it, other people know me for my nine to five, I'm a scientist <laughs> and a lecturer, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And that multifaceted, we were talking about how Shelly does makeup and whatever, and then she's this musician on the other side. And sometimes you feel like you're betraying one over the other and you feel like one part of you is lying. When the truth is, you know what? I love it with these like <laughs> slight comments from studio audience. <laughs> I wish I knew your heart to me and what you're thinking. You know, and like how you just feel like one should take preference over the other. You know, and people like even I said to you, so how do you want me to introduce you? Should I go and make up artist or musician? You know, mm -hmm. you know, and we we tackled, we wrestled with it, but then I said no. We really have to embrace. You could be both. Mm. You are both. You know, but it takes so much like unlearning yeah. to. And I think you know. Yours is even more interesting because of the, 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 the how different they are. Yes, you yes, know? yes, yes, yes. And then you're in the science field where thing, some things are not taken seriously more. Mm. I mean, it's transforming. People are thinking of mm. it differently. Mm. But, like, I can imagine it's like you have a podcast. The scientists, they're like... And when they hear the podcast, <laughs> you run. Yes, it's like, is this the same girl who's in a lab coat? <laughs> you know, and I don't feel that one betrays the other. No. Not even the slightest. You I know. think that's a beautiful thing about us human beings. We're so multifaceted. And especially where we're at now. Yes. Do you understand with the amount of information we're receiving now? Mm. It is so easy to be exposed to the many different things that... I remember I went for, I think it's called a psychometric test. Psychometric mm. test. In grade 10 because my mom shout out to my mom she's always been like a star parent she's like no man you guys need to figure out now what direction you're going to take you know especially for like choosing subjects so we went to some psychologist we did a whole bunch of tests me and my brother and then when mine came the psychologist said maybe she must come back when she's older because from fashion designer to chartered accountant to medical doctor like mm. everything is on this list you know and now looking back i remember that struck this thing to say oh i'm still immature i can't decide what i like and now that I've grown old and I've really settled into this multifaceted being that I am, mm. only now I'm like, Hi, it's fine. Man, it's, fine. Mm. it's fine that I'm, I'm like diverse. And because of the amount of information that's coming at me, the opportunities that come at me have allowed me to diversify.
and i think we're robbing ourselves by wanting to like stick mm. in one lane mm. life is so long i think all of us must explore something one of my colleagues yesterday we had like an um just a training session type of thing and one of the icebreaker was tell us something interesting about yourself and she's now like she's in her 40s but she's discovered um, DIYs and she wants to pursue carpentry. And, you know, it's like, we mm. are so amazing. I look at my mother. Mm. My mother is almost 60 and she has things she still wants to do. Yes. You know, yes. new things that she still yes. wants to do. So we're really robbing ourselves by thinking we must but, stick to one yes, lane. There's yes. no need. And people, because they're scared to diversify, they will impose those fears mm. on you. Mm. There's someone who said to my mom, I'm so confused. <laughs> so hurt for so long and i carried that oreo you know psychometric what are you? Test that said i'm confused and immature now it's this person until one day i shared it with someone a very wise woman in my church and she said to me i would have called you many things but not confused and then she's taught me the words like multifaceted diverse mm. hey, and you know when somebody gives you a vocabulary like yeah man <laughs> actually <laughs> you know and and don't get me wrong i mean there is a whole jack of all trades master of none but still always better than a master of, of one. one of one yes you know yes, that's the full but quote. The, the, the the statement always ends a jack of all trades master of none <laughs> when you learn the full quote you're like been robbed my whole life of feeling like i'm normal and the, the the other thing is that we feel like we need to complete all of them what if you go into something and well, you not, discover you're onto something mm. what if you go into something and you discover actually this is not for me yes. one less thing you have to consider or go into yes. like know? na guys i can't sing one time Nikki Hoka <laughs> and I'm like, I know. I believe in be and in giving up, hey. I believe in giving up. It's important. Yes. It's okay yes. For, for you to try something to, you know? and then decide, yo, no, this didn't land here. It didn't so land. It's okay. Didn't land. Let's move on to the next one. You and discover that's how you learn. And like, you oh my discover gosh, this yourself, is what I, this your is how I talents. Am. Oh wow. I love little, it. I'm loving this guy. I don't know if you guys are <laughs> I feel like we're so obsessed with something coming like to the end or mm -hmm. having this big ending moment mm -hmm. or okay um now i'm i'm sewing things i'm gonna mm -hmm. be a big what what no there's no need mm -hmm. maybe i was enjoying sewing at that time and it's yeah. okay mm -hmm. i've gained a skill let's move on and the other thing um now that i'm thinking about the sewing thing um i can't remember what when we had this conversation or it was it even in this context but of, about the fact that there's some things you can enjoy just for yourself nothing has to be nothing about no, making money yes nothing about being good at it yes you know i think definitely for me that would be more like very artistic things guys not like being dumb, but <laughs> you've seen the artwork in my bedroom <laughs> there's something and i'm just like for you. it's okay it's for me it's my little Please. therapy but I'm, i can't even paint a tree you know what i mean <laughs> and it's it's just that it's for me it's my little you know and it's okay it's okay mm. that you're not perfect at it but you know that you've got a desire to do it and you've tried it and you tried yeah. it and you keep trying it and you keep doing it you know, not that I'm going to try to go make money from painting. That's the part where you give up. Hey, ma, <laughs> these days, obey hey, yellow blob. Hey. And it turns into something. I don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but Linda, I'm like, hey, some people have connections. <laughs> because Linda, I could do that. <laughs> You're looking so lovely. I think after this, Shelly's going to be getting bookings. Oh. Oh, that would be so awesome. Mm -hmm. Guys, shout out, shout out she's going to be in the description box. <laughs> yes. Oh, <that> <laughs> heavens. And she's even got like the whole masseuse thing and she comes with the, what do they call? Oh, my God. <laughs> 30 minutes. You guys didn't tell me I don't know how to do my own makeup. <laughs> Every week you don't tell me that I don't know how to do my own makeup. So for the next three episodes when you see the speech, just know. <laughs> Shirley Evans, Shirley Evans, thank you so much. What did you say? What was I saying? I said you come with the whole table. Yes, yes, yes. She comes yes. with the whole table. And so if you want like at home treatments, she does at home treatments. And she's absolutely amazing. This is coming becoming an advert. It's not paid for. I promise you it's not paid for. <laughs> but I just think she's absolutely amazing. She's good soul, good spirit. So check her out in the description box below. I think we can round up. Do we Definitely. have anything else to go over? No, that was the Get Ready With Me episode. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much for always liking, sharing, subscribing. If you haven't. How judge? How judge? For real. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. We'll catch you next week. Goodbye and God bless.